Okay folks, so this is the Cartesian Diver, which is a really cool experiment. So you will need, first of all, some water just in a glass. And then you'll also need a straw. You need to cut some of the straw off to three centimeters. So that's what I've done already here. And then you need a little blob of uh, plasticine on the top. If you don't have plasticine, then you can use uh, blue tack as I've done here. And then another blob on the bottom wrapped around. And I think you can see there's a hole there. So the idea is it's sealed at the top so no air can escape. And at the bottom, the air uh, could go, well, wa no water should be able to get in there because there'll be air in there trapped inside. So what will happen is it'll bob around in the water like this. Hopefully if I bring this into a shot here, you should be able to see. So I've just gently plopped this into the water. And when I let go, I am hoping, ooh, there we go. It bobs around on the top there like that. It shouldn't sink. And if I give it a little push, it goes down and it comes back up. That is almost neutrally buoyant. And I'll explain what that is at the end of the video, but that is what you need. In other words, air is trapped inside here and there's more weight at the bottom than there is at the top. So it bobs around and it stays upright. Okay, so this is the magic bit. I'm going to use this bottle and I will put this in and we're going to try and make our own little diver. It's almost the same principle that a submarine uses. So this is going into the top here. There it goes. Sploosh. I've put the lid on gently. Don't want to knock it over. Right, not much is happening at the minute, but if I take my hand or hands and I squeeze the bottle, down it goes. Magic. There we go, if I let go, up it goes. I'll just do that again. So I'll bring it in a bit closer so you can see. So if I squeeze the bottle, there it goes, it goes down. And as I let go, it comes up. Now what I could do is squeeze it very slightly. Then I can hold it there in the bottle. And that's the same principle that a submarine uses. So I'm squeezing it, it's below. If I squeeze it harder, down it goes. I squeeze it less and up it goes. Amazing, isn't it? So have a go at making one of these and have a think how a submarine works. How do they use this principle in a submarine? Okay, so just to finish off, uh, let's have a look at the science behind this a little bit. So in this first picture, um, you can see the um, little submarine inside our bottle here. And when you squeeze the bottle, the big plastic bottle, um, it compresses the air inside. Now, obviously, you can't see this because the straw isn't see-through. Um, but if you manage to find a clear straw, you will actually see that the water pushes up inside. So the air compresses, and because of this, then it sinks because it has less buoyancy. And then when um, you let go of the bottle and you, you release the pressure, if you like, the water is, is pushed out and the air space is larger, so therefore it has more buoyancy. And this is the same if you go diving or you know, you're in a, in a submarine, this is the same principle that they use. I've got a couple of cool pictures here as well. So here is a, an illustration of a, a diving bell that uh, people might have used to go and collect things from the, the seabed. So it literally was a bell shape. People would sit inside breathing uh, oxygen that was being pumped down to them. And then here we go. We've got 1716 this is. This is Edmund Halley's diving bell. And you can see there, there's somebody sat inside a big airspace and it's held down with weights and he's blowing into a tube Seems a bit dangerous, doesn't it? Blowing into a tube, and this guy has a sort of a, a cage, it looks like, on his hat, on his head, but it's actually a solid hat. And theoretically, he should be blowing, the chap in the big bell should be blowing air in so that the other chap can, can breathe. And look at him there, he seems like he's just walking along with his walking stick like he's walking on dry land. Not sure how safe this is, but it's uh, an interesting illustration. And then just to finish off, here's a modern uh, diving bell that people today might use um, to go down and inspect, um, say, in a, a deep um, mining rig out to sea or, or to go and inspect to see if they can find a, a wreck on the floor or just to look at the wildlife and things like that. This is still quite a basic um, version here. We've got much more modern uh, systems now with, with electronic uh, drones and things like that that we can actually send underwater and they can go incredibly deep now as well because uh, they're unmanned drones whereas originally 
the weakest point in these uh, systems would have been the person. So as you can see, you need thick steel to protect them from the pressure and all sorts of safety systems. Um, so I hope you enjoyed making this at home. Uh, feel free to send me some videos and pictures of how you're getting on at home, folks. Okay, bye for now.